Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Yep, I do appreciate you stopping by. We got another Hardywood Park Craft Brewing Beer to do. I went in back into the uh, craft beer store where I bought the Kentucky uh, beer that was, I don't want to say infected, but it was heavy diacetyl butterscotch taste. And everybody commented that I should contact the beer store and the brewery and all that. Well, when I went back in, uh, the owner of the beer store was busy brewing beer and wasn't in front where I could talk to him. And they didn't have any more of those beers left uh, to buy. Uh, so I didn't get to talk to him about it. But I did contact uh, Hardywood and spoke with uh, Zach, who I guess is in charge of quality control and everything. Super nice guy. Uh, and he apologized for uh, for me getting that uh, bad beer, uh, even though it wasn't bad enough. It's going to hurt you, or if you drank it, or anything like that. But having the heavy diacetyl butterscotch taste to it. Uh, and uh, while I was at the craft beer store, uh, seen this one, which wasn't there before, so I decided to pick this one up. And these beers are not cheap beers to buy, guys, especially in this big 750 corked in cage bottle. Uh, they're 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 pricey. Uh, I mean, uh, they're not cheap to buy. And this is a big beer. It's a bourbon barrel raspberry stout uh, from them with vanilla beans. Uh, so, and, and I didn't see any kind of dating on the label here. There may be something stamped on the bottle that I can't see. I don't know. Uh, I wish they would put that on the label somewhere. What vintage it is, uh, but I have no control over that. Uh, but anyway, back to my conversation, he said he would send me another one of those out. Hopefully it's not going to be bad. I've got it in the fridge, chilling down so we can re-review it. And they sent me also another one, a Trader Joe's uh, version of a stout. Uh, so uh, we've got both of those in there. And both of them were the same big corked and caged 750 milliliters. So thanks again to Zach at uh, Hardywood uh, for uh, taking care of it. Uh, I mean, uh, they're... Definitely great customer service, and hopefully, I'm just hoping because usually that the acetal ferments out, so I don't see how one bottle could have that, and where none of the rest of the bottles have that's in the beer. I mean, uh, unless it's a separate batch that was allowed to ferment out, I don't know how it could change. So, uh, we're going to re-review it uh, coming up soon, and and if it's good, I'm going to tell you that it's good. And if it's got diacetyl butterscotch in it, I'm going to tell you that again. So, uh, uh, we shall see, guys. Uh, I do appreciate him trying to rectify the situation. Anyway, let's get back to this one. This is the Bourbon Barrel Raspberry Stout with Vanilla Beans, 11.5%. Um, and I think they have the, even the IBUs on it, 11.5%, 50 IBUs here on the label. So like I said, uh, I wish they'd put some kind of dating or vintage on it, either on the bottle or on the label somewhere, guys. Uh, Untapped says it's a 2019 edition. Of course, we're uh, Bear Advocate clumps them all together. Uh, and uh, speaking of Bear Advocate, uh, they've had uh, one, two people. One person loved it and the other person didn't. So it all depends on where your palate is, what you want to drink, what you like to drink, and what your palate can stand. If I would probably had this beer sitting in front of me 10 years ago, it would have probably been way too potent and too strong for me. So it depends on what you're used to drinking and what you like to drink. And uh, if you've been drinking Budweiser, this is, going to, this is going to kill you. It's going to be like drinking Motorola. You're not going to like it. But if you've been used to drinking bigger beers or heavier beers or bourbon barrel beers, 
you may like it. I'm hoping I'm going to like it. So I'm not a big fruity beer kind of guy, uh, but uh, bourbon barrel beers I am a fan of, but this is a raspberry ver version of it, so we shall see. Uh, but don't base on what you're going to buy on what I say. What I may like, you may hate, and what I may hate, you may love. So let's uh, let's get on with the guys. Uh, I think we've gone over everything. We got the ABV, the IBUs, and according to Untapped, it is a 2019 edition. So let's get this big cork and cage off of it and see what we got. And hopefully, I can get this cork out without having to get the pliers. Oh no, it's in there pretty tight. Oh, it's moving. Yeah, I'm going to be able to get it. Here we go. Listen for the pop. There you go. There it is. Nice pop. Tell me it's definitely still on the carbonation. And like I said, the beer is up to here. And normally they're up to about right there. So uh, not quite to the normal inch headspace. Uh, we got we got about two inches of headspace on this one. So we're going to go right down the center. And being a great big bottle, we've got enough to share. All right. We got us a nice full glass there, about a finger of head on that pour. Very dark looking beer over to the light. Good looking beer. Very nice looking beer. Uh, I've been very impressed with all the different Hardywood beers that I've done until we got that last Kentucky version, which heavy diacetyl, butterscotch. Don't want to see that or taste that in my stouts, especially when you pay fifteen dollars or sixteen or twenty dollars for a bottle of beer other than it's got that big heavy butterscotch diacetyl taste. So let's get it to the nose. Nice roasted malt, hints of some bourbon. Little bit of raspberry on the nose. Probably going to have more than that on the taste. A bit of caramel, toffee, black molasses. And uh, they've done this, according to the label here, a dessert beer, raspberry stout, is truly a feat in decadence. Loads of chocolate malt, cocoa nibs, and local... Seasoned red raspberries from Agri-Berry Farms all contribute to what would be described as a raspberry truffle in liquid form. After months of patient maturation and freshly emptied bourbon barrels, our raspberry stout is finished on Madagascar beans, revealing a confluence of smooth, rich, dark chocolate, ripe raspberries, and real vanilla. A little bit of vanilla on the nose. But I'm not getting huge raspberry notes on the nose. Maybe this is very subtle. But I bet it's going to be in the taste. Let's find out. Cheers, everybody. Very tasty. The raspberry on the taste is there. Off the chain. The raspberries may be overpowering the bourbon right now. And again, this was not a cheap bottle to buy. Anytime that you're going to buy a bourbon barrel beer in a 750 corked and cage bottle, it's not going to be cheap. Usually. Not always, but usually. That's a safety beer, guys. Not getting any diacetyl butterscotch on this. This is a very tasty, big time raspberries. Slight hint of some bourbons. I think the raspberries may be overpowering the bourbon a little bit. I don't know how long they, they leave these beers in the bourbon barrels. In my humble, honest opinion, I think it could have been left in the bourbon barrels a little longer. Slight hint of some vanilla. Tasty. Decent beer. Uh, I don't want to say decent. I don't want to degrade the beer. It is a tasty beer. Uh, most definitely not a B beer, but we're going to let it warm up and come up to room temperature like we always do on all our beers before I pass any grades or say anything negative or positive. Uh, uh, 
but I am usually 99 out of 10 times so far uh, with what they're producing. So uh, with that being said, we've got enough to share and that's what we're going to do and I'm going to sip on this and might have to step out on the deck and puff on a cigar to go with it. Uh, these stouts, especially the bourbon barrel stouts, go very, very well with a nice, pleasant cigar. So, let me uh, sip on it for a while and we'll come back and give this one a great. Alright guys, I'm back. I'm sipping that on about an hour. Tasty beer. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of the fruity beers. Uh, I think the raspberry is overpowering the bourbon notes on this beer. You may find it absolutely outstanding. Uh, don't base what you're going to buy on what I say. I'm just not a big fruity guy. Uh, I don't. I think from what my experience is, if they're introducing raspberries or blackberries, some heavy fruit into the beer, it overpowers the bourbon. And I don't know how long they left it in the bourbon barrels. I don't have that information. I think, in my opinion, I think they should have left it in the bourbon barrels a little longer to get some of those bigger bourbon notes. But it is what it is. Uh, I find coffee does well with bourbon barrels. Uh, but the, the fruit kind of to overpower everything else in the beer to me. I, I do find it very tasty. The other half loved it. Uh, I don't think it's an outstanding beer, guys. Uh, but I do think it's a, a very tasty beer. So let's uh, do the final chug here on this one. I'm so glad I'm not getting the diacetyl butterscotch notes on this one. And we're going to find out uh, on the other one that I reviewed not too long ago, uh, the Kentucky version, uh, whether it's still got the bourbon in it and the butterscotch is not overpowering everything else in the beer. So, uh, final chug. A very smooth drinking beer for an eleven and a half percent alcohol is well hidden, or as well as it can be for an eleven and a half percenter. Uh, Fifty IBUs, fairly easy to drink, not too bitter. Uh, I do wish they would put some kind of vintage on the label or on the bottle somewhere. I didn't see anything on the label, and I don't see anything on the bottle. I wish they would do that somewhere on it. Uh, maybe they want to do the same label year after year after year, but I wish they would do something to let us know that it is, it's a 2019 edition. If it is, according to Untappd, it is. Uh, but again, I'm not a big fruity guy. Uh, I think the, the raspberry is just overpowering the bourbon for my taste for what this beer costs. Uh, I am going to give it uh, 95. It's an A beer. And if I could taste the bourbon a little bit more a little, and... Uh, be more prominent in the beer as far as the aroma and the taste, it would get a better grade for me, but I think the raspberry is overpowering the bourbon. So that's why I'm giving it a uh, 95 instead of a better grade. Over to Beer Advocate, they don't have any uh, grade. Like I said earlier, uh, only two people have commented, one liked it and one didn't. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it, it was a, a decent beer. Uh, I did enjoy it. It is a great final beer of the evening for me. Uh, and again, uh, the other half did like it. But I, I think the bourbon notes are a little too suppressed for what you have to pay for this beer. Uh, over to Untapped. Untapped has it at uh, four. Uh, that's right. That's their A minus scale. I think it's a little better than an A minus, being as smooth and easy drinking as it is. But again, uh, if you're expecting big bourbon notes, you're not going to get those guys. Uh, it's just, the raspberry is just too prominent, too overpowering for everything else in the beer, especially the bourbon. But at least it doesn't have diacetyl or butterscotch in it. So, 95 for me on this one, guys. Uh, if you've had this one from Hardywood, uh, their bourbon barrel raspberry stout, let me know what you think. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.